have you, and I'm going to um, ask you to have a look at the dialog screen on your right. It has a chat feature at the bottom, and if that's shrunk and you can't see anything there in that window, there should be a plus sign that you can click. And that's a place where you can type questions and comments, uh, which will help uh, make this a more interactive session. My name is Thane Joyle, and I'm one of the CDS consultants who will be presenting tonight's workshop along with my colleague, Michael Healy. Hello, everybody. It's Michael here. And we also have Marilyn Scholl in the background, who is kindly going to help us organize and moderate your questions. Hello, everybody. Oh, so they can't hear us. So you can talk, and if you want to. I'm like 99. Uh, let's see. Whose voice is that? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh. so right. The uh, the scheme is that um, okay. our attendees, you do not have voice privilege, so you are limited to that chat feature for communicating with us. But please do communicate, even if you have technical questions or needs, um, so that we can try to address those issues as we go. I am going to figure out how to go to our next slide, which I managed to do all by myself. I want to remind you guys that CBUILD is a great way to support your board, <coughs> offering a full suite of learning and development tools, including this online learning workshop. The resources for this workshop and for the other workshops that have been recorded in the series are available online in the CBUILD library, and there's a link to that on that slide. If you have questions about CBUILD, you should contact Mark Gehring, and his email is at the bottom of the slide. So you have a sense of who you're talking to. Here's a picture of our CBUILD team. Michael is the tall fellow in the back with the fullest beard, and I'm standing in front of him. And Marilyn is to the right. I want to express my deep thanks and appreciation to this whole team for uh, making tonight's workshop possible, especially to Michael, who is fabulously fun to work with, and to Mark and Marilyn, who provide the most amazing behind-the-scenes support that I have ever experienced. And I'm going to pass now to Michael to let him introduce tonight's workshop and tell you what we're all going to try to do together. All right, thanks, Thane. Um, before we go too far, I want to let everyone know that we've got um, a couple uh, board leaders who have graciously given some of their time this evening to help us uh, create this conversation. And I'm hoping that um, Peter, first you, and then Rosemary, you will just take a quick minute to let us know, uh, introduce yourself, tell us what co-op you're from, and just let us know where you're calling in from tonight so people get a sense of where everybody is. So Peter, how about you? Sure, absolutely. This is Peter Hammond. I am the president of the Outpost Natural Foods uh, Board in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I am calling in from uh, Elta, Utah, in the middle of a massive snowstorm. All right. Thanks, Peter. And Rosemary? Sure. This is Rosemary Klee, and I'm president of the Board of the Wheatsville Food Co-op, the only food co-op in Austin, Texas. The only food co-op in Texas, and we are in Austin. Nice. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, I wanted to mention that um, Carrie Witcher, who's board president at Menominee Market in Wisconsin, uh, had agreed to also be here with us. Um, and she put a lot of thought into uh, how she would present what her board is doing to the rest of us. Uh, and just moments ago, she called in to say that her two-year-old is sick tonight, and she just can't do it. So I will try to represent uh, some of her ideas, her board's ideas, as we go along. Um, but I want to make sure I thanked her in public uh, for helping us get this far. Um, so we're going to come back to uh, Peter and Rosemary in a few minutes. Um, I wanted to give some foundational ideas, some background um, to both the workshop uh, as a whole and then to the idea of self-evaluation, um, what we're going to try to get through this evening. So. Um, one of the things that Thane and I hope, and then Peter and Rosemary in conjunction, uh, is that what folks will take away from this workshop is just, just a basic reminder. This stuff matters. Um, the exact way you go about evaluating, um, we're going to present a variety of ideas, tools, methods. Um, but we just want you to take back to your board that 
um, it, it matters that, that having some agreements about that what we're doing is important and if we're going to say that it's important we should check in and see how we're doing. Um, the second thing is if we, if we can share that understanding that it matters, then how do we share some ideas, um, what works for different boards, what has worked, um, what tools might make sense given a particular circumstance. And so we're going to share just a range of tools and processes that uh, we've gathered um, based on our conversations with boards. Dane and I, basically, we've said, let's go talk to some folks, ask what's working, and see how we can compile that information for others to learn from. The stories from Peter and Rosemary and uh, indirectly Carrie, uh, we're hoping that you all will hear from their stories, learn from them, not necessarily to go away thinking, oh, I've got to go do exactly what Outpost is doing, or I've got to go do exactly what Wheatsville is doing, um, but just to start hearing from these experienced board leaders and boards how they got to where they are, what decisions they made, and how things either do or don't work for them. Um, and then at the very end, that you have a little energy for it, that we don't want to, um, we don't want you to feel like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming, that there's a whole lot to do here and that I'll never be able to, um, but that there are some basic, easy things to do that hopefully you'll have some energy for, and that there are more um, elaborate uh, tools and processes that if you do have energy for, you have some ways of going about uh, approaching them. Um, but again, just the, 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 the foundation, um, it matters, and we want you to have some good energy to carry it into the board work. So that's, that's the workshop this evening. Um, so what I want to do now is on the next couple uh, slides is just, again, not, none of this is um, going to be breathtakingly radical. It's, it's just a review of what evaluations are good for. Um, so our, our first uh, assumption is that an evaluation is a good process, a good tool, a good mechanism to assure ourselves that the board is, is healthy, that we don't stop evaluating when everything is going good. It's sort of like, it's sort of like that annual checkup at the doctor. Um, you don't only, or well, I should say you don't, maybe some of us have better or worse uh, habits around this stuff than others, right? But, but the idea is with, with regular checkups at the doctor, you're going in not because you're ill, but you're just trying to make sure that there's uh, a, a, an objective assessment that you really are doing okay. Um, to remind ourselves of what we are doing that's working well, let's keep paying attention to those, let's not lose sight of that. Um, secondly, you might actually find some things to, to be concerned about, some places where the board is off track, and that the evaluation is not then, in that case, it's not just a mechanism for um, scolding ourselves. It's actually then an opportunity to say, oh, yeah, look, here's a place where we, we've missed the boat a little bit. How do we get back on track? Um, so we're going to talk a, a bit about using the evaluation as a learning opportunity, not, not just as a, a, a grade. Um, on the next slide, we, we build on this idea that um, the evaluation is a learning tool uh, and that the reason that we're doing all this, is it possible to flip forward, Thane? Um, the reason that we're doing this um, is that uh, the, the evaluation work is not just for the folks who are on the board right now, but also for the directors that will come later. That, that Building a solid board is ongoing work, and the board that we have now in our co-ops is a board that has been built over many years by the efforts of many people, and our hope is that the efforts of the folks who are currently on it will continue that progress. Um, so you want to uh, check in, make sure that we are moving forward, that we are growing as a board in the same way that we hope our cooperative is growing as a business. Um, Board leadership matters to the member owners. This is, this is the mechanism of democratic member control. Um, we don't want to have um, boards that are just window dressing. We don't want to have boards that um, are just a group of people that uh, show up and chat with each other once a month but don't have purpose. And so the evaluation is a way to, to check with ourselves. Are we clear of our purpose and are we accomplishing our purpose? And of course, uh, 
whether you are a GM on the call tonight or whether you are a, a director, you understand that um, a good board is a critical uh, addition, a, a critical component of the co-op for the manager. That if the manager is having to struggle with a poorly functioning board, uh, in addition to all the other work that goes into running a successful business, then we're draining resources from that business. And so we want to make sure that the boards are functioning at the highest level possible um, so that the board, at the very least, isn't interfering with the success of the business and much more hopefully and importantly that it's contributing to the growth of that business. So all of that is just a reminder that it matters and it matters to a, a range of people. Um, the evaluations always begin with, uh, or should, always begin with a common understanding of what our expectations are. If we don't have a common expectation, uh, a, a common set of expectations, then we don't have any basis for an evaluation. And so one of the things that we want to remind each other about is that we, we must begin with um, what are our agreements? What do we expect of each other? What do we expect of the board as a whole? What do we expect of each other as individuals? Once we have that, uh, which is not necessarily a static process, but it's the beginning of this process, once we have uh, a shared understanding, then we want to have some tools that we can use to check to see, are we living up to that understanding? Are we accomplishing what we said we wanted to accomplish? Are we fulfilling the duties that we said we wanted to fulfill? Uh, and then thirdly, we want to have a way to use that information, to use that evaluation to continually improve the board and the work of the board. So this is, a, this is a, um, as I said, not static. It's an ongoing, continuous process. There's a cycle that never ends. Um, our understanding of our roles and duties may change based on what we learn from our evaluation, um, our behaviors, our, our actions might change based on what we learn from our evaluation. But there's this ongoing work of we have expectations, we have some mechanism for checking to see if we're meeting our expectations, and then we have some way of following through on that evaluation. Okay, so what we're going to do now for a few minutes is we're going to build on each of those pieces, and then we're going to get some stories from uh, from, again, Carrie indirectly and from Peter and Rosemary about how their boards are doing some of this. Um, our, our assumption is that at the very least um, boards have some, I, I, I should say it's our assumption, our, our, our basic hope is that the minimal uh, expectation that a board would have is some agreement that you might call a code of conduct, um, you might uh, have a, a a document that you call board expectations or director expectations. Um, if you're a board using policy governance, um, which most of the boards, I think, uh, who are present tonight, I guess I shouldn't say I, I, but many are, um, you know, you, you have in your board process policies or in your board GM relationship policies, that's where you have, that's where you have stated what your shared understanding is. So your, your statements about conduct or ethics would be in a, a document like that. Um, also, you might have uh, expectations that are in the bylaws that, that haven't been explicitly restated in your board documents, uh, and so you might um, also want to occasionally um, look at that. Look, are the bylaws asking something of us that we haven't uh, otherwise stated somewhere else? Those, those documents, those are our shared understanding. Um, a, a shared understanding is not built on uh, each of our independent um, understandings of what the board is supposed to be doing, but there's got to be a common understanding, and that understanding for it to be common needs to be written down and kept somewhere. From if, I could, if I could just emphasize that point, Michael, because I think sometimes boards trip themselves up trying to invent or come up with, um, you know, what those agreements are, and if I could just focus the thought process just a tiny bit more, um, there are understandings, there are kind of two understandings that I think are really important for board members to be thinking about and checking in with themselves and with the group about. There's a set of expectations that go to 
uh, individual board members themselves and their responsibilities to the board as a group and to other board members individually. And then there are also agreements that the board collectively has with the ownership of the co-op. And so evaluation is going on on both points. Um, and when you look at those uh, codes of conduct and bylaws and so forth, you kind of can do a scavenger hunt looking for you know, both sorts of things, figuring out what is this group responsible for doing and what are my responsibilities as an individual board member. Do you want me to keep yeah, right keep, on keep going, going Michael? That That's great. Yeah. Talk about um, tools. Because what we're going to do just to organize our time together tonight is talk first about uh, the sorts of tools that you might use on a monthly basis to do evaluation within the context typically of your board meetings. Um, and then second, we'll spend and we'll ask our guests to share their perspective on those kinds of tools and their experiences. And then we'll go on and talk about another group of tools that you might use less frequently, maybe quarterly or annually, something like that. So for monthly evaluation tools, there's really, as this slide shows you, kind of three uh, categories, if you will, or three reasons you might be doing evaluation during your meeting. Um, at the end of your meeting, you might, at a minimum, um, be evaluating the meeting itself. How to it go? Did we do OK? I think Marilyn Scholl, when she was working with our board, one of the kindest things she ever said to us was, well, you know, five minutes worth of really good uh, self-evaluation at the end of the meeting is better than none at all. So that's a good minimum. Um, but there's something that I've seen a couple of boards that I'm working with do at the beginning of the meeting is just go around and check in as the individual director's preparedness for the meeting. And that's also a nice practice for keeping on track. I think commonly we see boards um, evaluating their written agreements, whether they're in the form of policies or through other documents, um, on kind of a rotating basis, looking at them one at a time um, on a periodic basis through the, through the course of a year so that all of the agreements that the board has get reviewed at least once. I really like how Michael talks about monitoring because he talks about it as something that ought to be really simple. Um, in fact, the thing I like best about working with you, Michael, is that you keep reminding me that board work should be fun and it should be easy. It should be attainable. It shouldn't shouldn't kill anybody. We shouldn't be burning out our board leaders or our board members, um, to say nothing of driving our general managers into the ground. So <laughs> when you're monitoring board policies, um, you know, it's pretty simple. Keep it simple. Keep it constructive. Follow up and use the outcome. You know, whatever information you get, do something with it. Don't just let it sit there. Um, and Michael, I think you are going to now introduce our guests and let folks, well, I guess first up, um, we have an absent guest, but perhaps folks could share their experience and just what you do on a monthly basis at your co-ops. That would be wonderful. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, introduce some of the things that Carrie mentioned to me. This is uh, some stuff from uh, Menominee Market. Um, and then maybe I'm, because part of what uh, Menominee board was doing is similar to what you all were doing, Rosemary. Maybe I'll segue in and let you um, share some of the specifics from your board first. Um, so thanks for getting us this far, Thane. So um, one of the things that uh, Carrie described to me um, as we were talking about it was their, uh, I think, relatively new. Oh, before I go too far, I just want to remind people that at any point, if you have a question um, for either Thane or for me or for our guests, don't 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 hesitate. Don't be shy. Use that chat. Uh, we will we will do our best to get to all your questions. Um, so anyway, Carrie was describing how their board um, has been on a monthly basis reviewing one of their uh, governance process or board manager relationship policies. Their their board that uses the policy governance model, and that they um, do an interview or not an interview a, a uh, like a survey. Um, in between the board meetings where each person assesses independently the, their, that individual's uh, rating for the, how, how well the board is doing it on a one to five scale. And then they compile those results and look at those results at the meeting itself and then make decisions from there. It's, a, it's a, for them a quick, easy way to compile the overall sense of the board about how well they believe they're doing uh, in relation to a particular policy. Um, so what I'm showing here 
is just, uh, for example, um, their G5 policy with uh, three sub-policies, and you see that each board member who responded in this case um, rated the overall, sort of the global policy, and each, each sub-policy. On a one to five scale, how did they think they were doing? And according to this assessment for this, this month, um, basically they're saying, look, over the last year we've done pretty good on this. We're, we're mostly on track. Um, we're going to talk a little bit later about how a board might use this information if they were trying to figure out where to improve on. But, for example, a board might say, well, the, the place where we scored ourselves the lowest was on that 5-1 um, section about linkage with member owners. Um, my, my experience tells me that's a common one for boards to always be thinking, how do we do better at that? And, and so they might say, okay, let's really focus on that one in the next year. Um, I wanted to, um, because Rosemary, I know your board does something similar to this, I was hoping maybe you could describe uh, your board's process, um, how you approach it. So just leave this slide up for a minute, if you don't mind, Thane, and then um, how you all go about this kind of work. Can you do that, Rosemary? Absolutely. Um, we actually transitioned to this form of monitoring. We thought it was more rigorous to have everyone on the board actually weighing in on the, the evaluation, where previously we actually had um, delegated to one director to create a monitoring report, similar, I guess, to what some people, I know what we do for our GM when they look at a policy and they try and kind of write a statement about, well, assessing the board's work. So we also use this group process. Um, we previously just did it in the meeting. We um, had a big whiteboard or a notepad and people would put the results up and we actually transitioned to using SurveyMonkey and having people do it ahead of time and, and that's been really helpful in that for one thing it gives people more time individually to talk about it and think about it and also to write comments about any of the specific items that can then go in the board packet so people can read them ahead of time and we can all think about them. So we actually have a super policy hugger director who loves compiling these things for me and um, actually even thinking about them and, and he actually sometimes makes recommendations based on the results that he sees. For example, last month, um, based on some of the comments and the results, he suggested that we might think about, you know, looking to the CDLD model policies um, for some of our policy revisions. So um, during our meeting, we actually talk about the results of the monitoring using those three thinking questions that were shown earlier, um, this idea of, you know, are we doing what we said we were going to do, what can we do better, and um, is this a policy we want? So that's been, I think, a really helpful process for us in revealing, constantly revealing all sorts of different things. From um, this month, for example, we monitored a policy on board officers, and I, I, it was really interesting to uh, get a comment from a director saying, you know, actually it might be good if we monitor these confidentially because, um, you know, it might be kind of hard for people to be honest if you know exactly who's saying what um, to, you know, revealing that we need to learn more about uh, our work when people comment on, you know, their understanding of what our board calendar is for the year. It really helps, I think, me as the board president also just think about what people do and do not understand. Um, we've actually ended up, when we look at people answering things like, I, we, I don't know the answer to that question, you know, what, why don't you know the answer to that? Is it because our monitoring schedule is kind of wonky and we should be monitoring this later in the year? Um, is it because you actually need more information for that and we need to figure out how to communicate that? Or is it maybe that this policy isn't really working for us? not what we want. Rosemary, let me check in. There's a couple things that I was hearing here, and I just wanted to, to get a little uh, better understanding. As you started to describe it, I started thinking, wow, that sounds like that's a lot of time and effort to do all this um, in-between meeting, uh, self or self, not self-assessment, but individuals assessing and then compiling. And do you, do you feel like it's a, a burdensome process, or do you feel like it actually is easier than whatever you were doing before? Great question. I think it really is easier in that when you consider where we started, well, it's not easier than where we were when I started on the board, which was actually not doing any monitoring at all. Uh -huh. I have to just sneak in a little plug for, for you guys at CDS. 
for really helping us see that value of, you know, connecting to what we said we're going to do and what our job really should be. Um, but what we did initially was have, you know, one director volunteer to write a report, and that was extremely cumbersome um, and it kind of limiting. And it also prevented us from really getting all of us deeply thinking about what the policy was. Um, the process of doing it collectively in the meeting was, was pretty simple in that we do have an administrative assistant. And so they just basically made a table similar to what you're seeing on the screen with, you know, there's a name. We actually didn't put the name. We, we just put um, the policy number. So what's in the, the top row as a header would actually be was in our column, our first column row. And then we just had kind of a ranking from one to five and don't know. And so people just put a little dot in whatever box they were in, and we could visually see, oh, look, there are lots of dots there in the three column. That might mean that we need to talk about that one for improvement. And then our administrative assistant could actually record that. And as you'll see a little bit later on, we've actually started including that in our minutes. But in any case, we always compiled those results for the record. Um, now that we're using SurveyMonkey, um, I don't know how many people have used that, but it's actually pretty easy. I mean, you can just really cut and paste the text of the policies into separate questions. And it, it's pretty easy to set up, and it's, it's actually a really easy thing for an administrative assistant to do. We actually had one of our directors who was excited about it and did it. And once you have those policies set up in survey format, you can just keep reusing them. So it's kind of a one-time effort to set them up. And then in terms of monitoring them, um, it doesn't take that much time for each director. It certainly depends on the length of the policy. But you, know, you can spend anywhere from like 2 to 20 minutes, I would say. Um, but really closer to the five-minute side, just like thinking about each one of the questions and putting in your answer and maybe typing up a comment. And then getting a, a summary from SurveyMonkey is also pretty easy. So we have a director who's chosen to go the extra mile and, and actually form a thoughtful summary. <laughs> but I think that that's really optional. Um, so to answer your All question right. in short, it, it hasn't really, it's actually saved this time. Good. Um, I, I want to, um in a second, Peter, get you to describe uh, part of what you all are doing. But before I move on, I wondered if, if you, as a, as a board leader of a completely different board, just uh, very quickly, how would you react to this? Do you think it's something that, uh, where do you see value in it? Where do you think there might be things for board leaders to be aware of that might be glitches? Um, no, I, I think it's a, it's a great idea. We don't get down to this level of detail in terms of um, you know, looking back and evaluating those, we obviously are monitoring our policies on on a, on a periodic basis, um, but don't get to the point of surveying um, the, the other board members to to see where they think we are. We, I would say we do that more on an, an annual basis as we do our annual review of ourselves. You know, what did we accomplish this year? How do how well did we think we did? Where did we fall short? And then let's focus on those things for the coming year. So, uh, our approach. I would say is more of a conversational nature uh -huh. um, in terms of people providing feedback, typically in the meetings or then in the evaluation forms we have on the quarterly annual basis to get that feedback. So you're, you're I, I, I really like, I actually like this idea a, a lot. Again, our, our, as you know, our uh, policy register doesn't go down to this level of detail uh, in terms of, you know, laying out some of these things. We are much at a much higher level in terms of the objectives we're trying to get. But I could still definitely see um, a, a good, a, this playing very well into that and getting feedback from the board members. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah, that is something to, to remember also, you know, as we hear from different stories, um, Al Post in particular, right, as Peter said, has a different, their, their policies look different. And so the way they might monitor them might look different. So again, as, as you attendees are listening, Remember that you have to make sure whatever ideas you hear, they make sense for what your board is doing. Um, yeah, I, I want to keep. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say again. You know, our approach is is kind of principle based, and we are focused on the principles of care, loyalty, and obedience to to the the, the objectives and desires of the ownership. And that's those are sort of the three things we continue to look at, making sure we're abiding by those three uh, principles in everything we do. Yeah, that's a great uh, example of how you all have really kind of figured out what is the highest level to pay attention yeah. to, and you continually pay attention to that. And, and, I, and I think it's, it's, 
I like the details and I also like it's sort of putting everything in context. Every conversation you have needs to be in the context of care, loyalty, and obedience to the people that, that are, you know, um, relying on you to do what you need to do. Um, and then the question, I think I agree for each board is, so then how, to what level of detail do you take that to make sure you are fulfilling that obligation? Nice. I want to show real quick on the next slide, Thane, here's a, a sample of a format that you all are using at Outpost. And I wonder if you can um, describe this, this document a little bit to us, Peter, and tell us how you all use it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, basically on a monthly basis, you know, as we've mentioned, we, we do that, that check-in process. Uh, and in my mind, the check-in is really important for a number of reasons, one of which is actually to get people to know where everybody's mind is, whether good or bad. Um, you know, someone has a sick child at home, their mind is kind of there, maybe not at the board meeting. So we really have people tell us, you know, what's going on in your life, give us a quick five, ten minute check-in, and then everybody provides, you know, sort of two comments that they say. One is they are prepared, they've read the information, they are prepared. Uh, and the second is that they have no other, no new conflicts. Because again, a, you know, a challenge for us is people are always doing new things. They may have a conflict of interest that's come up, so we want to address that in every meeting to give people the opportunity to think, okay, what's changed over the month? Has anything changed that I might need to bring up to the board? So a quick thing interesting about that is we've typically, as we've gone around on those two questions, prepared and no new conflicts, uh, nothing, we'll, we'll, have, we'll go through that and nobody will say anything for quite a while. And at one point, a couple of months ago, I said, you know, are we still, are we getting out of it what we need to by asking these two questions? Because we actually weren't getting a lot of feedback from people. And in that meeting, we actually had one person who said, I, I must say I am not prepared for this specific conversation. So they excused themselves from that. But everybody said, it's just a good reminder that I know I'm going to be saying these two things in the beginning of the meeting. And when I say them, I'm, it just makes me think and, and realize why I'm here, what my obligation is, what I'm really doing here. So they all, uh, to a person, said, no, we continue to want to ask these questions. So that sort of gets us started off on the right foot in each meeting. And then I just want to, real, right before you move on, Peter, I want to yeah. point out, I feel like that's a really interesting way to think about an evaluation, that it's not necessarily a form you're filling out, but it's evi each person evaluating themselves based on a common agreement that we will be prepared. So the question Absolutely. is, are you prepared? Yes. And, and uh, it, it's, a, it's, all, it's just people knowing they're going to have to say that question makes, beforehand makes them, I think, read things a little bit more carefully, think of questions they might want to ask, um, and that kind of thing. So it's, you know, we, we all, I think, take a little more time knowing we're going to say that thing, those two things in the beginning of the meeting. Uh, and then to the, the item you have up, uh, at the end of the meeting, we do an evaluation and then ask these eight questions, and everybody, uh, we need to give responses from everybody, yes or no. Uh, on these items. Um, obviously, some of them uh, will be more important for a specific meeting or not. You know, uh, an example might be, um, you know, the, the financial statements, number six, understand the periodic, periodic financial statements. You know, although now we, we, we're looking at those pretty much every meeting, but, you know, in the past, we might not have done anything related to financial statements in a meeting, so that didn't really pertain. Um, but again, we really we really want to take some time at the end and go through this. Did we really do this? Did we you know, listen respectfully to, to everybody? Did we honor divergent opinions? These are important concepts we think we need to think about all the time, every month, to make sure we're, we're staying on the right path. So then, Peter, is this, instead of just kind of an open conversational how the meeting go evaluation, you all have these focused questions that you ask yourselves every meeting. Is that how you do your meeting yes, evaluation? I, I, I go through these, meeting, these questions at the end of the meeting and ask for responses from everybody. And um, I would say, uh, some, again, sometimes we pretty much go through them, yes, we followed, but oftentimes someone will, will you know, identify a specific area and, and say, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I, I brought up a point in the middle and I don't think, you know, I was given <laughs> an opportunity to express my, my divergent opinion and we, and we talk about that. And, you know, decide, so how can we approach that better in the future? Um, does, are there any outcomes that need to, to come from that? Um, but again, so, so yeah, it, it's a specific thing we go through. Thanks. Um, we're going to move on pretty quickly here, but I wondered if, Rosemary, you had any uh, thoughts about what you're seeing here, what you heard from Peter, uh, again, as a board leader of a very different board. What, what stands out for you? Oh, thanks for asking. I was just going to try and type something in a little chat window. <laughs> I'll save you that effort. 
you guys out there listening, you should type stuff in there. Um, I, I guess that sounds really cool to me, actually, to um, have these questions on a regular basis. And I wonder how, how much time does it actually take for you guys to do this? How much time do you spend with this? Uh, not very much time. We, it's probably about, uh, if I'm doing the, you know, planning the agenda, I, I usually leave maybe 10 minutes. Uh, or, and or depending on what we would have been going through in the meeting, I might give it 15 or 20 minutes, but typically never more than 15 minutes. Okay. I, I actually have a similar experience to that. You know, at the end of our meetings, and I know that we'll show this a little bit later, but you know, we have these questions that we ask, and sometimes there, it seems like for several months in a row, there's not that much to say about it. Um, and so yep. I wonder, you know, is that important? And and then, you know, next thing I know, something comes up. And so it, it actually is really, I, I second that idea that it's hugely valuable to just pause and ask the question because creating that space creates the opportunity to hear something that you wouldn't otherwise know. And whether it's an affirmation of something that, you know, like, for example, we've struggled often with staying on time. And I know that we're the only ones that do that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> We've gotten to the point too is like having a um, super hardcore facilitator and then not having her and, and doing it our, on our own and you know feeling like wow okay so now we're you know going from you know this really um, uh, disciplined structure to me and all of us being accountable for it and we're maybe like five minutes behind is that okay with everyone or how reasonable did you think that was so yep. um, anyway I don't mean to ramble on about that all right. You know, so, I, can I, one, ahead, can I say one other quick thing about that that I think is important, because uh, actually a board member brought it up to me recently. We had there is a temptation to actually look at those questions just as rote and whip through them, and consider the meeting done and go on with the rest of our life. And she actually brought up a good point, which was that we were we were kind of moving down that path and not giving those eight questions enough time and thought at the end of the meeting. So. Again, it was a good reminder to me that you know that's an important thing we need to do at the end. Did we really do what we were supposed to do for this whatever time it was we spent together this month? Yeah, and I also think that it was super cool this idea of addressing conflict of interest every meeting and preparedness. And um, yeah. definitely going to talk about that a little bit during when we talk about more of a, a longer interval evaluation. But um, for now, I guess um, here we are showing the. This is what actually appears in our minutes for the summary of our monitoring report. And actually, I apologize that I didn't actually send out the a better example of the, of the results that we get, because it, they actually do include comments. Um, what, what you see in that previous slide is really that summary at the end is like, did anything significant come up in our conversation? So you can see the last line, we discussed the po possibility of revisiting B1. And I think that that's an example of the kind of stuff that we learn. I mean, if, if you think about the time it takes, you know, assuming that you know, say we've had an administrative assistant set up the survey monkey and that, you know, compiling the results actually could already also be done by an administrative assistant, then really a, an individual director might spend, you know, five minutes a month um, of their outside of the meeting time completing the survey and then in the meeting, um, depending on the nature of the policy, we might spend five minutes. Actually, we, we used to try and just spend five minutes on it, but we realized that, um, in our situation, we actually have a fairly young board in terms of the amount of time that the average amount of time that everyone's been on the board. So it's actually really valuable to take a little bit more time, and we use this evaluation time actually as a way of making sure we all understand our job. And so it's actually been really efficient as this multi-purpose thing. Um, so that's the one thing we do is monitor our policies and meetings. So that's a regular thing. And then this board self-evaluation, which is on the screen right now, is. Um, that end of the meeting check-in that uh, Marilyn Scholl helped us get to. It's just, you know, this things we did well, things that we can improve, and sometimes it just seems like this rah, 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 we're so great, you know, or like room for improvement is just like, oh, we missed somebody. But there's definitely, I mean, that's definitely important stuff. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that that's indicative maybe of um, we're, we're doing well, <laughs> or is it that, you know, are we being um, thoughtful about the things that we can improve? and so I think it's just important, and I would, I would second this idea of like don't get discouraged if you don't feel like something brilliant comes up every time you go through that you know, routine check-in process. It's supposed to be quick, but it really is a powerful opportunity to have something really important come up, and that does. And even if that only comes up like once a year, wow, weren't those like three minutes at the end of the meeting worth it to have that, that happen? 
good. Um, we're going to have to move on in a second, uh, so I don't want to spend more time on this because you all, I'm going to ask uh, both Pete and Rosemary to add their insights on another section. But one of the things I want to point out here, uh, what you're seeing is an example of two different ways of doing a meeting evaluation, a post-meeting evaluation. Here on the screen is uh, just a quick pluses and room for improvement. What Peter described that they do at Outpost is answering a set of eight specific questions. And in both cases, they are recording their responses somewhere. Right? So we see here in the, in the Wheatsville minutes, the, the record of that is, is somewhere. It's kept. Um, so that's another piece of, of the puzzle here is just making sure we keep track of what we're doing. So I want to move on to the, uh, the next section here, and then we're going to come back to uh, Rosemary and Peter for you all to describe more of what you all are doing. So thank you for that. And Thane, what's next? So the next thing we need to talk about are more um, different kinds of tools that you might use to evaluate what's going on with your board on a longer frame, on a broader, not only a longer time frame, frame, but also from a broader perspective. And so there are tools that you might consider using periodically, either quarterly or annually. And the most common that you're going to see is um, pretty similar for those boards using policy governance to what you might do in uh, evaluating your general manager. You might consider putting together a summary table, capturing all the monitoring that you've done. And this, whether you're using policy governance or another method, if you have agreements written down, you, and you're monitoring them over the course of a year, you can go ahead and put that in a table form and look at it at the end of a year and see whether or not there are any patterns or trends or anything that uh, you're concerned about that you wouldn't have noticed when you, things are passing by on a yearly basis, month to month. So it may be uh, that um, trends pop out of that summary for you. If that's not the case, other boards use these, I want to be able to use the word meta. I like this idea, meta evaluation. <laughs> I think that's a cool word. But the idea is coming at the evaluation of the board's performance from a completely different perspective, using some kind of uh, separate survey tool to go through and try to identify issues that might be concerns that might not have come up in the process of working through the policies or agreements that the board goes through on a, on a monthly basis. Here's an example of a few questions out of the CBIL board assessment tool, which is one of these meta-evaluation tools you might consider using. There are others. You could create your own. Um, the idea is to have something that's external that would potentially identify things that you might not have thought of. And I would just like to echo something that Rosemary kind of touched on. You know, the point of doing, and Peter, you alluded to it too, the point of doing self-evaluation isn't just for doing this report card check, are we doing a good job, bad job, but it also is something about creating board culture and refining those agreements that exist within the board and between the board and the ownership. Um, it's almost as if you're sort of tuning the instrument as you were. And using one of these external tools can be a good way of checking to see if there are questions that haven't been asked and answered. Um, did we miss the forest for the trees, as Michael puts it? There are other tools that are used, peer review surveys, individual self-evaluations. Um, most important about whatever periodic evaluation tool you're using, it's just like the monthly evaluations. You know, it needs to happen. You know, you really need to do it, like Rosemary said. <laughs> um, it needs to be real. It needs to be constructive. And it, it has to get used, whatever comes out of it can't just sit on the shelf because then it hasn't added value to the whole process. I think we need more specifics, Michael. Well, we're going to, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, Carrie will not be here to tell us what her board does. But I, I want to um, just slip in real quick that one of the folks I talked to about maybe coming this evening to share a story was uh, the board president at Hanover, Michael Yakovone. But their board is meeting at this very moment. Uh, and he had a particular role to play that he couldn't uh, skip out on. Uh, but he was showing me an example of they just did a, a peer review kind of survey, so directors evaluating each other, um, a completely different than the other stuff we're presenting tonight. But it, I just wanted to mention that you know, it was a board that thought about their evaluations, what they were doing, what might be helpful, and chose one of those peer review surveys. Um, what I want to do is I want to give um, Peter a chance to start you um, all on the very next slide 
uh, there's an example of some work that your board did in terms of um, individuals uh, providing an evaluation. Um, and I wondered if you could describe the process that you all use to come up with this document and how you use it. Sure. I, I think um, it, it's the point that was raised before as well that you, you need to, at least, you know, we view on an annual basis, we need to evaluate ourselves, how, do, how we did, but then also how did the board do um, in general in achieving its objectives. So, um, you know, this document uh, is a compilation of a questionnaire that goes out to all the directors um, and they answer these questions. Uh, and then we, we compile it, and we at the end of at the end of the year we have, uh, I would say, a very comprehensive discussion um, about our performance individually. Um, and, and so you can see in here, there's I, I guess it's kind of broken into three. You know, there's obviously quantitative data, you know, number of meetings you attended, number of monitoring reports you did. There's some qualitative aspects in terms of you know your your participation in things. Um, you know, how you thought you did as it relates to being prepared. And then I think there's some subjective as well, which again gets to the, this is not a static document and, and while it's important to look back, r really I think the, the more important point is to be looking forward to say, how can we continue to get better? So we start to ask, you know, um, what do you think you can improve on as a director? Uh, what, do you, what do you think you, your skills are uh, or things that you're very good at that you bring to the table? So, you know, especially me as as the president can make sure, you know, I'm aware of those and I can start tapping into that, that expertise and make sure we're getting better. Um, and then it kind of, you know, the person's overall assessment, how do you think you did? And, and again, this, this, these questions continue to evolve, the questions we ask, the, the things we, we try and pull together, I would say th this has been the same for a few years, but we continue to refine it and try and make sure we're getting to the information we need. So when you all are then looking at this document, it sounds like what you're saying is the, the major use of it is it does help you understand uh, kind of the bigger picture of what everyone's doing, but then you're also evaluating the evaluation itself that you're just checking and saying, is it a useful tool? Absolutely, yeah. And again, this is all in the context of the, of the broader annual evaluation of did we as a board achieve our goals? You know, what did we say? Again, what did we say we were going to do at the beginning of the year? Did we do that? Um, and then how did we do individually, uh, and that's this document, how do we do in terms of our duties of care, loyalty, and obedience to the owners, and then again looking forward to the next year, so what should we look to do in the future. Uh -huh. Rosemary, what do you see here, what, what strikes you, what, what, what are you curious about? Um, I, I think it's really good to see that in this uh, kind of format, because I have to say, when I first started on the board, we actually had a self-evaluation tool that was was very simple, but it was really asking questions about attendance, and it was like, you know, how many times did you go to bag groceries at the store, how many times did you make it to a board meeting, and it seemed like it didn't um, necessarily capture some of the other qualities that make a really good director, and I see that those, um, you know, are kind of captured here in a way in terms of, you know, the kind of valuable value the skills that you bring, um, the communication skills, the meeting preparation. Do you do you guys have? Um, do you feel like that that other stuff gets captured within this this kind of survey or the more subjective items? Yeah, I guess that. And um, how do I ask? Like, do, do you feel like this captures everything that you guys need in terms of your? what's important about being a good director or what, like, this, everything that's in here answers for you guys what makes each director, um, I don't know, good at their job? I would say no. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's a, it's a good starting point. It's a, it's the base, and I, I think we're going to get to it in a minute, but sort of, you know, where we're going in the future starts to talk more about, you know, board development and director development to make sure we are, you know, really doing what we, we need to do and, and building skills that, the, board, that the, the cooperative needs, you know, from us, to, you know, to help it be successful. So to me, for us, this is kind of a, this is the baseline, and this is what we've been using for a while, and we're now in the process, I think, of, of moving to the next step of, 
of, of really, as you said, digging deeper and then starting to provide resources to the directors to build their skills and be better directors. One of the things that I hear, Rosemary, as you ask your question, and, and as I've heard now Peter tell the story, it's, it's hard to imagine that any one tool is the tool that's going to give you everything you might want. But I'm hearing this co combined uh, effort. So there are the, the meeting, the pre-meeting question, you know, did you show prepared? There's the post-meeting questions that we're all answering together. There's this annual self-evaluation. So there are many pieces, and that might be something for us to remember, is that there's not going to be one tool that does everything. Um, but that you you will combine different tools that on on their whole are helpful, um, and trying to do that in a way that is uh, also still reasonable in terms of the amount of effort, the time uh, that it takes, the energy that it takes to evaluate, as opposed to doing whatever else the board is doing. Um, I want to uh, real quick before um, you describe what you all do on a more periodic basis, um, uh, Rosemary. Say I, I got a note that uh, the entire Hanover board was tuning in here uh, in the midst of their board meeting, so I wanted to welcome them, uh, and maybe their ears were burning because I mentioned them a moment ago. Um, but Rosemary, you, you said that you all do kind of an annual um, using something similar to, but not quite the same as the, that C-Build board evaluation tool. Um, can you tell me what you all do on a, on a more annual or long-term basis and how that works for you? Yeah, definitely, and I guess part of the reason I asked that question is we sort of have, we, we started using this tool, um, I guess, two years ago, and I, I think we're still in this process of learning what exactly do we do with this, and it, it is really speaking of that question of where is the sweet spot, because you don't want to spend a lot of effort collecting information that you don't use, or you don't want to take a lot of time collecting information that takes more time than it's worth, and I would say we, um, basically, hopefully all of you have had a chance to access the spreadsheet that it's actually very similar to the, the CBLD uh, sample evaluation form. But um, we decided to try and break things down between these categories as a way to um, maybe dissect and have things maybe float to the surface a little bit better for us and, and really take that time to have people be a little bit more introspective in terms of their their own performance and their evaluation of the board as a whole. So what, what I see happens actually is that um, there are these more subtle and systemic things that we actually hear about during every meeting, but using this annual self-evaluation tool, those things really rise to the surface. So for example, there was a period where we were having a little bit of tension around committees and whether they were serving their appropriate purpose and, and that we were using them the way they should be used, and they weren't lasting forever, and et cetera, et cetera. And actually asking some of these questions on our self-evaluation form helps us identify that. Um, we had a year where our review kind of turned up that we felt like we needed you know, stronger leadership and we needed stronger facilitator, facilitation. And we actually then, over the next year, focused on developing leadership resources and getting special facilitation training and really checking in, I think, a little bit more about how we were doing in those areas um, this past year, uh, what kind of rose to the surface was that we wanted to better understand finances, and so we're trying to keep that in mind as we go through. One thing that I've really learned, though, is this idea of um, how are we going to use this information and understanding our job that I'm realizing that we do the sports self-evaluation at the end of the year, and actually it might be helpful for people to know at the beginning of the year, like really look at this form somehow and understand what the expectation is, like what criteria they're going to be evaluating themselves and the board on so that we can we can do that much better. Um, well, Rosemary, nice job circling right back to where we started this evening about you know, if you have expectations, then that's what you're evaluating. Did, um, and so for you to, to recognize the possibility of saying, hey, if we're going to do this annual evaluation thing, let's remind each other at the beginning of the process that that's what we're going to do. These are the expectations. I appreciate you mentioning that possibility. Finally, I think some other things I, I would love to throw in there in terms of annual, because um, I love that Peter mentioned you know, every meeting they check in about conflict of interest and and have this reminder of you know our purpose or our duty is care, loyalty, and obedience. That um, 
one, one thing that we've also started doing annually is um, talking about confidentiality. I think it's one of those things that's a really great learning thing. It's definitely in our code of conduct, which code of conduct was mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. Um, but to really understand the nuances of that, and also I think another thing which is highly nuanced is the idea of conflict of interest. And so um, we've just through all, you know the course of our business over years, we've just started to realize, wow, that's not a really straightforward thing. We might all think we understand what that means, but let's talk about it and learn about it. And so. Um, trying to do that, you know, every year really has helped us, for one thing, orient new directors on those things that are really, really important and also continue to build our own understanding as an entire entity. Thanks. Um, what I'd like to, to segue into is this, this idea that if we, if Rosemary just very kindly reminded us that, okay, part of the process is you, you know ahead of time what it is your expectations are, and then you evaluate against those expectations. Um, and then the next step of the process is what do we do with that information? How do we, how do we move forward with it? And um, maybe I could uh, ask uh, Rosemary for you to describe, you know, as a board president, how you're either thinking about helping your board do that or what you've done. Um, and then uh, get Peter to, to describe some of what they've done. I think um, it's a couple of things. Maybe one is certainly there. There is as as the president. In a way, there is a huge value in even just being that person that reminds everyone of our own responsibility, of everyone's responsibility. And I, as, that, as that has been a huge um, lesson to me recently, being as I mentioned earlier on a fairly young board in terms of our average experience on the board that um, everyone needs help really understanding what we're all trying to accomplish. And the board is so much more effective when we all understand that. So I see that actually even, um, even though it's really about me just telling everyone else what their job is as a, a leadership function. And then the other thing is as a leader to really home in on the opportunities. So creating more time in our meeting agenda or making sure that things are on the agenda or that there are certain people, whether it's having a guest or having someone be especially prepared for a topic, that we can actually, um, I guess really it's maybe a pride thing too, because I want at the end of the year for that not to be a weak point still. I want us to have moved on to a new weak point. <laughs> 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 or maybe all strengths, I don't know. So so you're, this, this slide is suggesting that there's some things where you're making adjustments on a monthly basis and some uh, really looking at the big picture on an annual basis. Um, how, how, where do you think you, your board, Rosemary, where, do you, where does the emphasis lie? Do you tend to do things mostly on that short-term basis or do you really make big decisions once a year that, that are very um, high value, high leverage kind of decisions? I, I think that it's actually a combination of things. Like the way that I actually think that you know our dialogue with with CDS has helped us kind of understand this this idea of a, a long term cycle and and what's actually really worked well for our board is to sort of gestate so an, an idea might come up in one board meeting and depending on the magnitude of the idea it might be something hey we can do different at the next meeting or it might be you know we'll transition toward that for other reasons so um, I guess you know an example the the facilitation issue. Um, you know, that came up when we, so we, we get the summary of our, our evaluation results. We talk about them at a meeting, and that's typically what we do with it. We, we absorb that information, and for something like facilitation, it might be, okay, you know, let's talk for a few meetings, or, you know, if we can get that discussion done in one meeting, you know, do we want to hire a facilitator? And, and sometimes things can be resolved very quickly, and sometimes it does take time and experimentation. So uh, it really has depended on the nature of the issue. Uh, for example, the committee work, there's an instantaneous, instantaneous change that we were able to make by being more structured with when a committee is formed, this is what they do. And then part of it was more of a cultural change so that we really make sure that, you know, there's sort of a habit that we need to break. So it kind of depends on, on what we've identified as a, a thing to change. Uh -huh. Peter, how about for you all? Do you, do you feel like the, uh, I mean, you've shown us now a couple different examples of, of your, your evaluations that you use. How much do you think, in terms of your time, your energy, your emphasis, how much of it is on that 
monthly regular evaluation, how much of it is on this uh, longer term evaluation work? Um, I think it's, I think we have a pretty good balance. Again, we, I think it's, you know, you're, you're, well, you're together maybe more than a, on a monthly basis, at least we are in terms of linkage events and the like, but, you know, we, we have everybody, we try to get everybody in the right mindset for the meeting, and that's, again, those questions and just getting the meeting off, um, both started and finished on the right note. Uh, on a quarterly basis, you know, something I didn't sort of mention, but we, we go through a board effectiveness review um, that the secretary pulls together in terms of the performance of all the various board members in terms of activities they did for the quarter. And then, you know, we do spend a lot of time annually um, in terms of an overall evaluation uh, of our performance individually and collectively, um, and then trying to drive to the future. I think one, you know, an area that we know we, we need to focus on more is, as you look at the slide, you know, sort of the, the board goals, a lot of stuff sometimes is, uh, I don't know how to say, it. we sometimes lose the, or don't focus enough on um, the evaluation, some of the feedback we get from the directors on what they want to get better at, and incorporating that into some of the activities for the future year. We do, you know, some of it in the retreat and, and other training opportunities, but um, we're trying to become more focused and better at following through on those you know, the little nuggets that, that directors give you sometimes, you know, that they do tell you what, what they want often and where they want to get better. And so, again, that's up to me as the president to, to hear that and, and be better at giving them um, the tools and the resources to do that in the future, in the coming year. So, Peter, let me understand. The, the, the slide we're looking at, this looks like this is now a compilation of, say, the board looked at its entire year's worth of work and said, okay, based on that, we've done some evaluation. Here's our goals for the coming year. But it sounds like you're suggesting there's a, another level of plan for the year that's based more on individuals' um, assessed needs for training or for understanding. Is it, you're seeing that um, as a different well, kind so of evaluation? Yeah, so, well, let me see. I mean, th this information you're looking at here gets incorporated into um, our, our meeting agenda. And these items are at the top of, of our agenda now for this year, so everybody sees though, that this is, this is, these are kind of the key items we're focusing on for this year as it relates to our performance. Um, in terms of, and I'm not sure if this is getting to your question, but in terms of what we're looking at in the future, again, is something I mentioned, sort of, you know, again, board development. We, you know, this year we have three new board members um, joining us, uh, and it, it just sort of reminds us that, um, you know, democratic process, anybody can run for the board, anybody can, can come onto the board, and what I, I think the common denominator when people come on the board is they have the passion, the passion for the cooperative, and, and what our job is as the board is to bring that into sort of focused and educated passion to help, uh, you know, do what we're supposed to do to help benefit the cooperative, and so what we've realized is we really need to focus on board member development. What are the skills that we need to have as board members, and let's document those, and then let's um, look at ourselves at the beginning of the year and evaluate ourselves in terms of, you know, what am I good at, what am I not good at, in terms of, you know, again, some of these things uh, uh, that Rosemarie was, was talking about, facilitation skills, financial skills, knowledge of, of policy governance. So we document what those key skill sets are, and then I say, I think I'm good at these, I'm not good at these, and then we develop a training plan for me to fill in those gaps so that at the end of the year I've, I've moved forward, I've gained some skills, I am now a more productive board member uh, for Outpost, I'm, I'm a better resource for our general manager as you know, we go through this challenging time that everybody's going through, because you know, that's really, that's our obligation is continue to get better um, and bring good skills to the cooperative to help it move forward. I could bring in a question from the audience here um, is, uh, and then expand on it a little bit. For, the question is, what are the, your director's terms? And then expanding on that uh, for, for both Ro Rosemary and Peter, when you do your evaluations, are, are there, is there anything uh, significant about the timing compared to when there would be uh, elections and turnover? So first, how long are your board terms and then how do the evaluations overlay with with elections and evaluation cycle. Rosemary, you want to go? <laughs> sure. I, 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 
<laughs> our uh, term lengths are, we're actually transitioning right now because we just developed new bylaws, thank you, Stane, um, to, from a, a two-year term length to a three-year term length. So that was definitely a very strategic move to create this, um, well, for one thing, because we have nine directors, the limited term turnover at, in any given year, and then also, obviously, the, um, the institutional knowledge. The evaluations right now are timed for the end of the year, and we're actually, you know, I think over the past, uh, four years, I would just say that we've gone through this enormous transformation as a board from really having, I mean, honestly, not, not really monitoring our policies on a regular basis, not doing self-evaluation, not checking in, to doing a lot more as, you know, you saw tonight and we've talked about. Um, and so I think that that might actually even be something that needs to evolve a little bit. But I think one thing that was, it just kind of happened last year that was really helpful is, you know, we do the evaluation and then it's a time we're following up on it at a time when we actually are inviting our new directors to be at the meeting in order to create this um, smoother transition. And so they get to hear what the previous board thought they were good at and weak on. And I think that's actually been a really um, nice piece of information to come in equipped with as a director, as a new director. Peter? Yeah, we're, we're also, um, we're a nine-member uh, board with three-year terms and three, obviously three people up each, each three-year term. So, uh, And then in terms of timing, uh, that, that annual, the detailed annual review that we go through is the, I believe it's the second to last, typically the second to last board meeting of the governance cycle that we go through that. But again, we're, you know, we do try and spread out evaluations throughout the year in terms of what we're looking at, the level of detail we're looking at, because it's, it does need to be a constant, in our mind, a constant reminder you know, why are we here? Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? And Peter, there's another question for you on um, on your board goals. What does tapping the power of our owners look like? What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, it's open for interpretation, but it it, I, it means you know I I think Michael got to it before in terms of every board struggles with greater linkage. In our mind, it's you know we are we are a co-op co of over 13,000 owners and we continue, we, we know we've got um, people within those 13,000 that have skills that we can use to help Outpost be a, you know, we are a, a great community um, resource in Milwaukee, but we know we can continue to grow that. And, you know, in our mind, 13,000 is, is a powerful number, and we can do a lot of great things and make a lot of great change um, in, in tapping into that. So it's, it's getting people to to be active, to bring ideas to us, um, to have us, you know, going out to them and hearing what they have to say, and then uh, making that come to fruition if we can. So it's those kinds of things we always try to do. And again, it's in our mind continuing to remind ourselves that we've got 13,000 people <laughs> that we can tap into, we're responsible for, but we can tap into to help make change. Uh, one of the things that I hope our, our guests will notice, whether or not you would have these same goals is less important than to realize that one of the things that Peter is saying as board president that he's done is taking this set of agreed on goals and, and making them present on every month's agenda. That's just one mechanism, one way for a board president to help guide the board forward, to say, look, let's remember, this is what we said we were going to do, and so we should see that uh, reflect it in the agenda at hand. So it's a way of building on, taking the, taking the evaluation and then using it to create goals and then using that as, an, as a way to continue moving the board forward. It's not just that we did the evaluation, now we're done with that, we can put it aside and go on and do everything else we were doing. It's that the evaluation feeds into that ongoing cycle of board improvement, board moving forward, always moving forward. And this is also, Michael, um, Obviously, this is incorporated into our annual review of the board. We, we review this and say, did we accomplish this? And then the board evaluates me as the president to say, did I help us as a board achieve these goals? So I, I respond in my, my document to the board when they evaluate me, you know, what did I do to help the board focus on board development, to help tap the power of our own, to do all these things for the board? Nice. 
Um, there's always more to, to uh, talk about on this, but I wonder, if, Thane, if, you're, um, if there's anything else you want to add on this or if you're ready to move on to the next part. I think we should move on, just in respect to folks' time. You know, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. And then it is possible to completely ignore board evaluation and just go on your merry way and allow the problems to pile up in your past. Uh, somewhere between those two extremes is probably the ideal. Um, do we have other questions before we close our time together? I'd like to make some summary remarks, but I don't want to end the conversation, Marilyn, if there's anything lurking out there. Yeah, there are a couple questions. Uh, <laughs> One is, uh, what do you think about external review of the board's work in contrast to the self-evaluation that the, uh, the uh, panelists have talked about? That, that's a great, this is Peter, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, we, we do, uh, well, so generally we incorporate some, we try to incorporate external um, reviews into a lot of our, our responsibilities as a board. We don't at this point have any, any external uh, entities to evaluate our, our self-evaluation. Right now we really pretty much are, each person is responsible for themselves <laughs> and for you know, monitoring themselves and deciding did they do their job or do they not do their job. I, I think that's about as far as we go at this point. I, I haven't been able to figure out how, how to incorporate an, an external into that. How about you, Rosemary? Wow, I think that's a really great question, that uh, we <laughs> certainly do not do that. Um, that. That's a really interesting question to me, because I think about, you know, we, we try to maintain this connection with our accountability to our owners through um, reporting, basically, and feeling like there's some transparency. And that's part of the reason that we put the monthly monitoring results into our minutes, so that, you know, that is available. Um, but, and then on an annual basis, we do some reporting to our owners about how we evaluated ourselves. But that's different than asking somebody from the outside to evaluate us. And I guess I intuitively think of the idea of, you know, what would, I, what would the criteria be for an external reviewer to know whether we were doing well or not? And it seems like there are a few things. One might just be the sort of gut level check um, on the part of maybe the owners and members of the organization. Um, there might also be maybe more of a, I don't even know if it would be possible to do something more on a legal or business scale, um, or maybe weighing against um, organizational achievement somehow. Um, but I, I just think that it's really interesting to think of what those questions are, because on, on the gut level, I think and maybe it's more than the gut level, maybe that would come down to the board really ensuring that there is a level of understanding about what a cooperative organization is and the board's role in that sort of organizational structure. And with that information, did the board create, well, I guess promulgate that understanding through the uh, membership and really uh, create some fruit, I guess, <laughs> in a way, I would say. So uh, I I'm, I'm really appreciate that question. I'm curious to ponder it and uh, see how that might fit into some of our future plans. Yeah, Michael, you would, I, I think in my mind it's sort of evolutionary. We're at, you know, we're at the individual level. I think you'd mentioned Hanover Board is doing sort of now a, more of a each board member is evaluating the other to some degree. I think that in my mind, it could be a next step for us. And then from there, you start to look at, is there opportunity for some external monitoring to happen as well? That's a, it's a, just a, a nice idea to think about that. Whatever it is that we are doing now on our boards may not be the final answer, that we can continue to think about it, yeah. what's working, what might we gain by using another process, what are we gaining with this process, so just to be keeping, keeping it alive. And another question is related to your general managers. Do they uh, participate in the board's evaluation, or do they evaluate their boards? Our, our general manager definitely evaluates us and uh, certainly you know, participates. Obviously, the, 
um, our, our, well, she's involved in all the meetings, obviously, and so she hears, you know, our evaluations of ourselves. And again, our annual process is, you know, it's, the evaluation is more all-encompassing of how did the board do in terms of achieving things, and she's she's obviously important and integral in that conversation as well. So yes, she's involved most. Another great question. Um, we actually don't have a formal process for our GM to evaluate the board, nor do they complete the annual evaluation form that we use. Um, we do have a general manager who is fabulous, and he's, he's actually been a great teacher for our board, as I'm sure other boards have experienced. Um, and he, the, I guess the, the role that he plays in terms of the board product uh, and evaluation is on a, a daily basis in a way. He, he definitely helps us um, be in the right place during the meetings, but actually this is a really interesting idea to me, whether or not there is a, a formal role that would be valuable for them to play in our evaluations. We do not usually, we do not have that. Again, I mean, our, our GM evaluates us on a lot of different things. You know, did we did we speak to her in one voice? Did we, you know, there's there's a number of criteria, and she evaluates us on on an annual basis, sort of almost separately, <laughs> evaluates us separately from from our process too. Hey, can you send those questions out? Yeah. Awesome. Definitely. If um, if that's something that you'd like to share around, we could certainly post it as part of the resources here. Okay. Thank you, guys. That's a wonderful segue. Were there any other remarks? The, the question? last question that I have coming up, Zane, might take you right into your segue, uh, which is how how would the the uh, panelists describe the balance between evaluation and uh, continuous improvement with the actual work of the board? Is it five percent of your time, twenty five percent of your time? How do you how do you how would you uh, assess that? Do you want to go take it first? Sure. Uh, from a timing perspective, I would say overall time. I'd say we spend. I'd say we spend maybe ten percent of our time on on our evaluation. Again, though, in my mind, obviously the purpose is to to make sure we're we're being honest and we're doing what we said we would do. But, but you know, the the greater purpose of all that is, as we've been saying here. What, what am I learning as the president? What are we learning as the board to help us do all this, all these things that we're supposed to do, do them better in the future? And so, you know, you spend 10% you spend of your time in order to drive change and improvement um, in the future for the 90% of the, the time you're spending on, on your real obligations to the cooperative. And Rosemary? I guess I would say um, we spend, you know, maybe five to ten percent of our actual like meeting time talking about things that I would say are related to evaluation directly. But I guess the real value I see in it is it sort of creates, well I shouldn't say the only, the, the real value because there's so many different things about it that are value, valuable, but it creates this culture of um, awareness about our performance and a connection to what we're supposed to be doing and it helps us really frame all of our our work and our conversations and even the, the times when we need to limit the time that we spend on conversations into the context of what we're trying to do because we're going to check that we did what we said we were going to do. Um, the other thing that I guess isn't really captured directly in the time that we spend is the, the learning. I mean, in addition to this culture of, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're doing what we said we were going to do, um, the constant learning that's involved in making sure that we, we can accomplish that and, and the, the learning that comes, that, that, that spirit of um, curiosity and availability to ask these kinds of questions in meetings that, that help us always improve or stay on point, it comes through the evaluation, the brief evaluation process that we, and the tools that we use. I wonder if I could um, just very, very briefly tell two stories, um, Dane, right before you close uh, things out here. Uh, uh, I think sandwich uh, what Rosemary and Peter, you just said. Um, so two boards that I've worked with uh, over the last few years, one board um, 
spent an entire year where almost they did almost nothing but argue over whether they were doing their job right or not. <laughs> um, that that every meeting was devoted to intense, vigorous debate about were they doing good work, and it really what it looked like was them arguing over the meaning of specific words and language in their policies. Uh, and it was very hard for me to witness uh, this because they contributed absolutely nothing else to the co-op during that time. I, I guess I'm exaggerating a little bit. But they, they seemed to, to be in this mode of the evaluation itself was the most important thing they were doing, and it was almost all that they were doing. And their co-op was not served by that. Another board that uh, I've worked with recently where um, the board president said to me, I, I feel like I'm the only one that gets this policy governance model that we're using. I, I feel like no one else understands it. Uh, and as we talked about it and started trying to figure out how to address it, one thing came out is that um, he could not remember how many years it had been since they had actually evaluated or monitored any of their agreements. Um, it just had never happened as far as he could. He said he thought they used to do it you know, many, many years ago. Um, but that they weren't doing any real self-evaluation. They had all these agreements, but no one was actually ever checking to see if they were living up to them. And so here you have these two extremes of, of board approaches to self-evaluation. And in both cases, the boards w were not serving the co-op. And, and in some cases, they were being kind of a drain on the resources of the co-op because their, their actions were so far off kilter. And one of the things that, Peter, you mentioned to me as we were talking about preparing for this is you felt like this is really not the time in economic history for boards to be a drain on the co-op's resources, that at the very least we need not to have that happen. Um, and at the very best, boards can actually be major contributors to our co-ops. Um, and so yeah, finding the right to. balance. Yeah, they have to be. We have to be. And so to make that possible, we've posted on the Seabuild Library website some of the resources that we showed slides of, pieces of the things that Peter and Rosemary shared with us today, as well as some Seabuild resources. Um, and you should take advantage of them. They're useful. And my observation um, about the question of how much valuation is enough is that it is highly individual. Um, and Grappling with the question is something that boards should be doing uh, routinely. Board presidents should be thinking about it and just thinking critically about which way to steer their boards, whether towards um, more critical inquiry or less, depending on the circumstances that are presented. Um, it's certainly one of those places where stagnation really isn't the best option. You know, I think we should close. I am very, very grateful to you, Michael, and Marilyn, for you organizing the questions. And Rosemary and Peter, you are fabulous. Um, your insights and the care and thoughtfulness that you bring to your leadership is um, a wonderful thing to see modeled. And I'm very grateful to you for participating tonight. Michael, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I just want to echo, uh, really, uh, Peter and Rosemary, that you all went above and beyond uh, the call of duty as board leaders to share your leadership with others. So I really thank you for that. Um, and I will uh, follow through later uh, with both of you just to make sure that uh, you know you got out of it also what you wanted to. Uh, and to the folks that are attending and uh, listening in, I hope that you got something from uh, you know these two people who are building their own set of will wisdom and their board doing the same thing. And remember that that's just it's an ongoing it's just an ongoing bit of work, and uh, we're all in it together. <laughs> Thank you. And we're in good company. Thank you all. Just a reminder that the next webinar will be three weeks from tonight, a GM evaluation on May 6th. Hope you'll join us and bring your friends. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank Good you. night.